okay so today we are going to do experiment number four separation of a mixture and flame test with an introduction to the Bunsen burner the materials and chemicals used are you would need a beaker evaporating dish unknown salt solution Bunsen burner wire gauge two iron rings one ring stand so these things we need basically for the separation of a mixture second part is flame test so for that we need deionized water one molar HCl 0.2 molar calcium chloride for the source of calcium ions similarly 0.2 molar strontium chloride for the source of strontium ions, barium chloride for the source of barium ions, copper 2 chloride for the source of copper ions, sodium chloride for the source of sodium ions, potassium chloride for the source of potassium ions, and unknowns D and B. There are many unknowns, but I am taking here D and B. And you would need a test tube to um, uh, take the one molar HCl to clean the wire and this is the test wire for the flame test and you, and also you would need the spot plate in order to contain your different solutions you would need the spot plate and this is the waste beaker where you are going to dispose of all the waste for the flame test So I'm going to introduce now Bunsen burner, which is the primary heat source in the lab. And um, what are the parts? So this is basically the base. That's the gas needle wall, which supplies the natural gas or methane into the burner. That's the barrel. Barrel is responsible for sup, um, you know, supply of oxygen into the barrel. So methane from here and oxygen from here, basically they both mix together before reach to the flame. And you can see this pipe. So this pipe is connected to the main gas wall. And um, so methane gas from the main gas wall come to the burner with the help of this pipe. Right now, this uh, the main gas wall is in completely off position. When I will move it, um, you know, a 90 degree or aligned with the pipe, then it will be completely on. And make sure there shouldn't be any cut or any uh, crack in the pipe that's not the safe situation basically to, uh, to to work with the Bunsen burner in the lab so now we're going to focus on the barrel part of the Bunsen burner right now it is completely in the closed situation right it is all the way down so uh, now I'm going to turn it counterclockwise and then you need to basically answer the question which is on page 27 of your lab manual um, Turning the barrel in which direction will cause it to get taller, clockwise or counterclockwise, all right? So I'm going, going to do counterclockwise. Now clockwise. Well, turning the barrel in this direction, you know, exposes the vent. So I'm when I do the counterclockwise, it just exposes the vent, and uh, you know, um, and this will allow more air into the Bunsen burner. So the uh, through the gas needle wall, methane is coming. It will mix with the oxygen. You can see the vent, right? And then basically combustion reaction will start. So now we're going to focus on the second main part of the Bunsen burner which is the gas needle wall and first of all you need to check whether it is uh, jiggling or not if it is not then it is safe to use and if it is then you should immediately inform your instructor because it's not safe all right so this is safe to use because it's not you know moving around or anything it's just you know form okay now um now you need to observe you know the turning the gas needle valve in which direction will cause this screw to get lower right and counterclockwise or clockwise so right now it is completely off or completely closed now first of all I'm going to turn it clockwise
clockwise, this is clockwise. Then counterclockwise. Now, turning the needle valve, you know, in this uh, direction, basically, uh, you need to figure out where it go goes, uh, you know, um, lower, right? In that direction, it will allow more gas into the burner, and that will result in the taller flame. The, you know, the flame is tall. So, basically, when, you will, when the screw gets lower, the flame gets taller. So now we are going to get the burner ready to use and light it. So basically, first of all, we are gently closing the barrel completely by lowering down the um, body as far as it can go down. So completely closed. Now, um, we're going to give about four full turns in the opposite direction of it with whatever we did just now to open it and supply the air. Two, three, four, about four turns. Then I'm gonna close the gas needle valve completely. Right, so it's completely closed now. Now I'm gonna give four full turns, same way as I did for the bar, um, you know, barrel. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to light the Bunsen burner with the help of the matchstick, okay? So I'm gonna turn on the main gas wall. You can see I'm gonna turn it on 90 degree of the current position. And you must be hearing a hiss sound, right? So that means the gas is coming from the main gas wall through the pipe and the gas needle wall mixes with the oxygen and coming there. Now, I just um, lit the Bunsen burner with the help of the matchstick. You cannot throw this matchstick into the sink. You would completely, you know, wet it with the um, basically water so that it will be completely extinguished and later you can throw it in trash can. This is another option um, instead of matchstick to light the flame and that's called a striker and um, in this case you don't have to worry about extinguishing the matchstick to throw it in the trash can so you know you can use if you have the striker. So now we're going to learn about the adjustment of the Bunsen burner flame. So let's see if the flame is completely yellow. I'm going to close the barrel and the flame is yellow. Yellow means it is in complete combustion. So I restrict the supply of oxygen by closing the barrel, closing the air vent. Now if, you, if I really want my blue flame back, so what I will do, I will open the barrel and now more oxygen is mixing with the methane and you are getting the blue flame. Now let's say this uh, height of the flame is small, right? And you wanna make it a little bit taller. So you would adjust the gas needle wall and you're gonna open it in clockwise direction and your flame is getting taller and taller, right? Now it looks like it is too tall, so I'm gonna bring it down by turning my gas needle valve into counterclockwise direction and now my flame is small. Now if the burner is making very loud hiss sound you know then what you will do you would decrease the amount of the air by you know using the barrel so you're going to decrease the amount of the air which goes into the barrel by a little bit turning the barrel as like that right 
Now um, we need to focus on the hottest part of the flame. So you can see there are two cones. This is the upper cone, that's the inner cone, right? So hottest part of the flame is the tip of the inner cone. Now we need to, let's say our, everything is done. So we need to turn off the Bunsen burner. So always turn off the Bunsen burner with the gas wall on the station. Never turn the Bunsen burner using the needle wall. Because if you will turn off from the hair, still the pipe contains the methane, right? So always you're going to turn it off from first from there. So once you turn off your gas wall, main gas wall, right? Make sure you turn your uh, needle valve as well in order to be safe. So right now it's in the completely closed situation.